Hi friends. Wanted to share a little bit today about my pilgrimage, as I'm calling it. This is really the way I live my life these days since July of 2021 or so, uh, arguably earlier, depending on when you say it started, but I'd say July of 2021 is when it started. Uh, yeah, this has just been such a beautiful way for me to live and has been really central to what I'm doing in the world. And so I thought I'd take the time to talk a little bit about it and where it came from and what it's like being on pilgrimage. Um, you know, uh, when I describe the life that I live, a lot of times people will um, sort of equate it to being nomadic because that's a common thing these days that people will go from place to place and travel here and there and <clears throat> live this nomadic lifestyle. And um, in a lot of ways, that is what I'm doing. I do travel from place to place and I'm all over the world and I don't have a home base. But uh, for me, I like to call what I'm doing and the way of life that I have uh, a pilgrimage and think of myself as a kind of pilgrim. And this is because pilgrimage is actually a spiritual practice for me and one that I've practiced previously before this um, specific pilgrimage that I'm on right now. Uh, yeah, I wrote a bit about this, about the practice of pilgrimage. There's a blog post that I wrote called The Practice of Pilgrimage, and uh, I've been on several walking pilgrimages too. And one was in Vermont and one was in California. The one in Vermont was, I believe, in 2016. Uh, no, it was 2015. And then um, the pilgrimage in California was would have been in 2019, uh, about five, four years later. And yeah, those two experiences, even though they were quite short, the first one was about five, four or five days in Vermont, and the second one was six or seven days in California, both pretty short, um, really just transformed my life. And um, in some ways were some of the most powerful spiritual practices that I've done. And uh, uh, there was just a lot of learning that happened through the act of pilgrimage and a walking pilgrimage in particular that I hadn't found those specific kinds of insights or learnings to be available to me through meditation practice, which had been my primary spiritual practice up to that point. <clears throat> walking pilgrimage really opened up certain things that I wasn't finding available in meditation practice. I think you can find those same things through meditation practice or other spiritual practices, but uh, for certain reasons that I could speculate about those just weren't I wasn't finding them to be available through the meditation practice and So the way that I do walking pilgrimage comes to me from my teacher So are you for all and also peace pilgrim who's been a tremendous inspiration on him and also on me and uh, really an inspiration on the way that I'm living my life now and uh, might say a bit more about her, but um, in this way of doing pilgrimage you're not walking to a specific place. It's not like there's a holy site that you're walking to. Instead, you just start walking and you um, don't have a specific destination that you're trying to get to. Ideally, you don't even have a plan for, oh, I'm gonna go to this place by this certain time. You're just walking and you're uh, doing this thing that I like to call trusting. You might also call it surrendering. There are other words you could use, but I like to use the word trusting to describe this. And, um, you know, you start walking, you go down a road, and then you come to a fork in the road. And the question is, do you go left or do you go right? If you have a plan, then there's a right answer, right? You go right because that's the way to get to your destination, for example. But if you don't have a destination, there's no right logical answer. And so how do you make the decision whether to go left or right? Um, it turns out there's this kind of experience of when you get to that fork in the road, you sort of take a guess or you feel into it and then you make a decision from that. Oh, okay, I'm gonna go left or oh, I'm gonna go right. And in a way, it's almost as if there is an answer. It's just not a logical answer that you derive from having a plan of where to get to. You just find yourself going left or you find yourself going right and you trust that, you trust that, you surrender to that. And ideally you take the same attitude of trusting, of surrender to each of the experiences that you have. So, um, you know, where are you gonna find a place to sleep, for example? You don't have a plan, oh, I'm gonna stay at this hotel. I know that I'll be there, I can get there by this time. You're just like, I don't know where I'm gonna sleep. So you trust and, you know, I found myself sleeping in all kinds of places. Um, 
in graveyards. I describe a rather unusual place that I found myself sleeping in in that article. Um, it's kind of an interesting story, but save that for reading that. Um, in any case, you don't know in advance where you're going to stay. And um, you could also not know in advance where you're going to eat or how you're going to eat. For myself, when I did pilgrimage both times, I ended up purchasing food that felt like um, the right way to do it those times. Um, I think I was almost conceiving it as like, there's a degree to which I am willing to trust. And the first pilgrimage I found myself on, actually, I didn't really trust at all. The, the, the sort of degree was quite low. And then the second time I did a pilgrimage, um, my ability to trust was much higher because I actually knew what that skill was and how to use it. And I was like, yeah, I want to trust as much as I can. And yet um, I found myself not trusting with the food thing. I think ideally I would trust that food would come to me. And um, it's a bit tricky because in America, which is of course where I did both of my pilgrimages, there's not really a culture of pilgrimage in other countries. People know about pilgrims. People know about religious wanderers and want to help them. Uh, there's not really a tradition of that actively in America. So people are quite suspicious of you. They don't want to let you sleep where you're sleeping. They don't want to give you food. They don't really trust you. They think of you as a stranger, not to be trusted, not to be helped, which is kind of unfortunate and, and it makes sense. But um, it's, I think it's unfortunate that that's the culture in America. And so, um, you know, I found myself sort of reciprocally not really trusting that people would want to give me food as a wandering pilgrim. So. I ended up deciding to purchase food as I went at grocery stores, at gas stations, that sort of thing. But I did, you know, really trust, okay, I'm going to find a place to sleep. I'm going to trust that my intuition to go left is right or whatever it is. Correct, that is. Um, yeah, so that's a practice that I did several times. And of course, I also found um, Peace Pilgrim to be a huge inspiration. And I read her book uh, often. I read and reread it. And find what she shared to be so helpful. And in, in some ways, um, you know, even though Buddhist practice is a major influence on me and it's probably easiest to identify as a Buddhist, uh, I think Peace Pilgrim has probably had as much of, if not more of an influence on me and the way that I'm living my life. I, some of the things that she shares in her book are just so dear to my heart and so central to the way that I see things and so central to the way that I do things that um, I think that might even be more fundamental for me than Buddhism. But um, she, of course, was a pilgrim. Um, she set out on her walking pilgrim pilgrimage for the last 30 or so years of her life, walking across the uh, North American continent multiple times, seven or eight times approximately, and uh, just wandering from place to place, trusting and uh, connecting to God, as she described it in that way. And just a really beautiful life and uh, practice that she had. And I'd really encourage you to look her up and I have a blog post about her and you can also order her book for free online. They'll mail it to you physically at your house or you can download it digitally. And those teachings are just so precious and so beautiful and would absolutely recommend them to anyone and who feels called or inspired by spiritual teachings. And um, yeah, she's a very simple person very ordinary and yet um, just profound depth of wisdom and clarity and kindness and um, also very actionable and uh, pragmatic teachings in, in what she has to share, which I really value. Um, so um, that said, I'm, I, I sort of found myself on a different kind of pilgrimage. Um, you know, it, actually I'm reminded there's something that Peace Pilgrim talked about of like, you know, people are like, well, do you think everyone should live this way? Do you think everyone should be a pilgrim like you? And she's like, I, you know, I forget exactly what she said, but to my memory, she said something like, well, some people might be called to this, but um, it might look different or they might find themselves doing something totally different. And it is going to be different for different people. And so I think that was sort of um, an influence on me of like, even though I found the practice of walking pilgrimages specifically to be incredibly helpful and I would definitely do one again. The current pilgrimage that I'm on is not a walking pilgrimage. Um, you know, I fly from place to place. I drive from place to place. Um, I do quite a bit of walking, but it's not a walking pilgrimage. Um, what I am doing is traveling from place to place and staying with different people who are willing to put me up. And so uh, people know that I live this way and offer to let me stay with them. And I travel from place to place of people that are willing to put me up. 
And um, this is sort of an, an alternative to renting a home or buying a home. Instead, I'm staying in the homes of different people and friends that uh, are willing to put me up. And that's how I live. I, I don't have to pay for rent. I don't have to pay a mortgage. And instead, I share in community with the different people that I live with. And um, I like to stay ideally somewhere like four to six weeks with someone, which is enough time to really get to know someone and spend quality time with them, but also enough time to, uh, you know, sort of plan different things that I'm doing since I have so many online projects. It's helpful to schedule calls and schedule podcasts and things like that and um, really plan around being in a certain place in a certain time zone. Um, that's just efficacious for the kind of thing that I'm doing. Um, but it's also not too long. I find that, you know, four or six weeks is a really good amount of time. Um, it's not uh, like, oh, I'm their new roommate forever. It's like, oh, this is a good quality amount of time to stay with someone. Of course, in practice, sometimes I stay with someone for as little as one night or a week or two weeks or something like that. I do travel quite a bit, so sometimes it's useful to stay less or even to stay a little bit longer than six weeks or something like that. Um, but yeah, in general, something like three, four, six weeks is, is how uh, long I tend to stay places and then I go from place to place. And at this point, I've been all over America. I've been to Portugal and the United Kingdom and expect I'll go elsewhere at some point. And um, it's a really lovely way of life for me. I think um, I really treasure spending time with the people that I stay with. Um, I find that I learn so much from the different people that I stay with, um, you know, who are unfailingly generous and, um, you know, are so kind to offer their space and their home to me. Um, and they typically just have such wisdom about different areas of their life and something to share with me that I can learn from either directly because they're teaching it to me or just from their example or noticing the way that they live their life. Um, I really pay attention to people and, how they live their life and the way they set up their home and things like that and I really just receive a tremendous amount of wisdom from that and also I think um, that the time that I spend with people is of benefit for them and that I have things to share with them that are of benefit and uh, different people seem to learn from different things from me uh, seem to find different kinds of benefits from spending time with me but it seems to me that when I spend time with someone that it's a really beneficial thing for them and um, my hope would be that it's something that both of us treasure for kind of a long time and uh, that we hold dear in our hearts and um, remember fondly as a, as a, a meaningful time and, and ideally kind of a, a before and after period of like yes that was the time that we spent together and uh, things were different after that and I think that's been true for the people that I've stayed with so far and um, I look back on the different people and the different places that I've stayed in oh yeah that's um that's where I learned that skill or that's where I had that meaningful connection or that memory or that's where that happened and um you know one of the unexpected benefits of this way of life is that it sort of uh, it has a lot of variety and expands a sense of novelty and as a result um sort of extends time you know when you're in the same place for a long time your sense of novelty and time sort of diminish and the days blur together, the weeks blur together, the months blur together, the years blur together, and it can go quite fast. But if you're changing where you are, there's a lot of novelty and you're taking in new information and learning new things and your sense of time expands. So even if two people live the same amount of time, you can have a qualitatively different sense of time and relationship to time. So I really enjoy that aspect of my pilgrimage, that um, my sense of time and novelty and new input um, changes quite a bit and I'm also really enjoying the sort of benefits for my projects of going from place to place and my service in the world you know it's enough time that I can really get to know someone that I'm staying with and also people in that area when I'm in a major city or hub I really try to connect with different contacts that I have in that area and get to know them spend time with them and uh, since I'm so online it's really valuable to like see someone that I've conversed with online in person and get to know them better and deepen that relationship. And because I'm going from place to place, I sort of have connections all over the world and my um, network is sort of expanding and my sense of who's where and what they're working on is really expansive. And I think that gives me sort of a different lens on 
what's happening in the world and I'm able to make connections between people that uh, might not occur to someone else and I think that's really beneficial to the people in my network and ideally the world when I make those connections and I enjoy doing that. Um, yeah, I think uh, it feels like a good way of life overall for me though, besides any of those sort of incidental benefits. Um, I like that it's simple and, uh, you know, I carry three bags and two backpacks and one sort of reusable grocery bag uh, because I have various equipment I need to carry far more than Peace Pilgrim did. She didn't carry very much, but, you know, I have a podcast and need to record videos and uh, I have different pieces of clothes and this and that that I need, but um, it's still a relatively simple way of life, just having three bags and um, I don't have a house or, uh, you know, an apartment or something like that to maintain or um, I like the simplicity of it. I like that uh, it's connected to generosity that uh, I'm receiving gifts from people and that they're letting me stay with them, but also I can give them gifts in, uh, in the way that I spend time with them and that I'm using my time to be a gift to other people, that the things that I work on are various service projects that I see as gifts that I'm giving the world. And I really enjoy that. It's, it's enjoyable to give gifts and it's enjoyable to receive gifts. And that flow is just a really beautiful way to live. Um, sort of in contrast to the standard economy, I think. I'm not receiving a salary from anyone that helps me pay for an apartment and pay for a car and so on. Uh, I have uh, a Patreon that people can support. And so I do interact with the traditional economy, but it's sort of an alternative to it in that uh, I'm, I'm not uh, following certain assumptions or norms that a lot of people are like having an apartment or a house or 401k or what have you. And that works well for me. Um, you know, it's, it's sort of a kind of monk's lifestyle or a pilgrim's lifestyle. It's a simple one. It's one that's dedicated to being of service and it's one that's based in generosity and that feels authentic and real to me and um, in alignment with how I want to be living my life and how I want to be spending my time. And I like that quite a bit. So, um, you know, I'm wondering, sometimes people ask me uh, if I find it tiring to travel place to place. And um, for me, it's a little bit like, you know, everyone has to do laundry, for example. I, I do laundry once a week or so when I can, like everyone else, provided that there's a laundry machine and so on that I can use. And I don't know, I've never really liked doing laundry. It's not my favorite thing. It's just fine. And uh, I try to find ways to enjoy it, being present with it and so on. And um, this sort of attitude for Marie Kondo, like thanking the clothes, I like that quite a bit. But it's, it's not intrinsically my most enjoyable thing to do. Um, I enjoy other things. And um, but it's something that needs to happen and I just do it and it happens and it's fine. It's not a big deal. And similarly, if I need to travel from place to place, uh, it just happens. It's like, oh yeah, today's moving day. I'm going to go on this plane or go on this train. And I think because I have relatively few physical objects and it's just the way that I live, it's like, yeah, today I'm moving and this is how it's happening. And um, generally, I don't find that too stressful. If it's international travel, I tend to find that a bit more stressful. Um, what with borders and passports and these days COVID testing and that kind of thing. Uh, but uh, I don't know, especially traveling within the States, it's not so stressful and it's even enjoyable. I get to see new places and I love that. And um, I actually keep a map of the different places that I've been and I love updating that and just really enjoy meeting different people and seeing new ways of life. And uh, it's kind of fun for me. So I don't find that too tiring. Um, yeah, I don't, I, I think it's a way of life that I like and enjoy. And so it's not um, taxing for me. And I just really like living this way and it feels good. And um, I choose to do it. So if I didn't like it, I'd, I'd stop doing it. I think that's probably another big difference between my pilgrimage and the one that Peace Pilgrim was on because she vowed to be on her pilgrimage to remain a wanderer until mankind learned the ways of peace. And in her lifetime, mankind did not learn the way of peace and, you know, arguably still hasn't. And so she effectively was a wanderer for the rest of her days, about 30 years. And I haven't felt called to make a similar vow. Um, I am doing this indefinitely. I could see myself doing it for the rest of my life, however long my natural life ends up being. Um, or I could stop at some point if that seemed 
effective, uh, like the good thing to do. It's important to me to live my vow to um, give my gift, as I like to call it these days, and uh, that might take me on something that's unexpected to go down a road I didn't plan on. And if that happens, I'll trust that, I'll surrender to it. That's that's the real pilgrimage, is, is surrendering to what is asked of you and, and what you feel called to. And uh, who knows? I, I really don't know what will happen. I could imagine scenarios where it would make sense to stop the pilgrimage and um, maybe be settled in a specific location for a period of time and, um, you know, really put down roots. Um, I'm not sure. I, I genuinely don't know. Um, I'll, I'll see what happens, what happens when I keep walking down this road of life. Um, in any case, right for now, my pilgrimage feels like a good way to live life, and I feel very grateful that I get to live this way. It feels like a real blessing that so many people are willing to put me up in their homes and uh, support me in that way, and that I get to travel to so many places. It, uh, it's a really beautiful way of life, and one that makes my life and service in the world possible. So. I'm very grateful for that and it's a joy to tell you a little bit about it and share it with you. So thanks for watching.